Hello and welcome to Health Science 100. I'm Professor Woods. Today we're going to start with Chapter 1, Accessing Your Health. We're going to talk about scientific models for health. Part 2. Causes of chronic disease in the United States. The four leading causes. Inactivity, poor nutrition, drinking and smoking. These are the ones that we want to really focus on. They're the problems for most people. There are social factors that have dramatic influence on health. Uh, economic disadvantages affect people, uh, leading to lack of access to quality education, lack of access to safe housing, uh, lack of access to food, nourishing food, and other essential items. These are huge factors, social factors, that are going to affect our health. The built environment. Um, some neighborhoods don't have sidewalks, so it makes it impossible or unsafe to walk in those um, environments or lack recreation areas, outdoor spaces, or lack uh, transportation to work, uh, things like that. And some environments are polluted um, or there are infectious agents, um, disease uh, present in those locations. So we want to be uh, aware of um, our physical environment. Policy making. Um, yeah, there are powerful policies that can influence positively health for individuals and for communities. Things like campaigns to prevent smoking or laws um, mandating child restraints or uh, wearing a helmet on a bicycle vaccination programs for children to access schools, required for children to access schools, and EPA regulations on pesticides, spraying pesticides or herbicides in, in local environments. All of these are examples of policies uh, that will improve our health. We need to get out there and vote for people who are going to implement uh, health-promoting policies. What about mindfulness? I've touched on this just briefly, but I, I'd like uh, you all to be aware that there are some things we can do to improve our health through the way we approach and the way we think about the world. Um, one of those ways is by passively observing the world and not attaching emotion to everything that's going on in the world. Sometimes it's, it's a good idea to slow down, take a look at life, just appreciate things, appreciate things as they are, um, and be kind to both yourself and others. It's always worth considering whether the other person is just having a bad day. Um, they cut the line in front of you or they cut you off on the freeway or, or they push you aside. Um, perhaps there's a reason for that that you're just unaware of. Uh, and most of the time, if we just let these things go mindfully, take a few deep breaths and move on with our day, um, our life is uh, better because we don't uh, take in stress. We don't accumulate stress and get reactive. It's that reactivity that increases our stress level. So try to be mindful. Uh, try to take a few deep breaths when uh, things frustrate, things anger. Uh, try to find safe spaces to express frustration or anger. Um, it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be angry. Um, but try to do express those feelings and emotions in safe environment. Uh, what else does mindfulness involve? Um, it involves a monitoring of our physical and emotional health um, and staying present in the present moment and forgiving yourself for things that have happened in the past. Not looking too far into the future either because uh, sometimes that can cause anxiety. Um, so enjoy now, and don't worry so much about the past and the future. Now is fantastic. Okay, so what what do we what do we know about healthcare? Um, the Affordable Affordable Care Act um, made a huge difference to people's lives, and continues to make a huge difference to people's lives. A number of people that were uninsured in 2010, it was around 15, 15 and a half percent. And that number is nearly halved down to about 8.6% of people. 
Uh, this has dramatically improved the health of a vast number of uh, Americans. Please be sure to get health insurance um, to cover you for any unexpected health issues. Look at models for health change. There are three models that people talk about. A uh, health belief model, which I've illustrated with this little girl here. If you believe something is going to be bad for your health and it frightens you, then you are likely to change. That's more or less the health belief model. If I believe that uh, falling off a building is very bad for my health, I will be uh, frightened of falling off a building and I will take great care around uh, dangers like that. That's the health belief model. Um, the social cognitive model. The social cognitive model is illustrated here at the bottom where, we, where people um, are thinking about changes to health by talking to others. Um, perhaps we uh, have friends that have uh, successfully changed exercise habits, given up a bad habit um, we, through talking to people that we know, people that we believe, perhaps uh, looking at role models, uh, sports people on television, things like that. Um, they can drive for us, pardon me, a drive for us um, and a willingness to change. And that's the social, social influences are. Uh, on, on our cognitive, on our brain, social influences on our brain, social cognitive model. Um, next is the trans-theoretical model. The trans-theoretical model is that there are various stages through which we need to pass uh, for any change. So first of all, we need, we need to recognize that there's a habit that mm, we could mm, do better without. Um, and then we want to contemplate what, what could we do differently. Can we replace that habit with something healthy? Can we change that habit and eliminate it? Can we reduce its influence on our lives and reduce its impact on our health? Um, then we think about it, we prepare. What, what should we do? Um, we take action. Um, taking action is a big, big step. Write it down. What are you going to do for the next 30 days? Um, we try to maintain that um, habit. Uh, reward yourself when you do it. Uh, and, but finally, there's relapse. Human beings uh, fall back into bad habits. It's, it's a constant fight for most of us. Um, it's a constant, um, constant contemplation that we need to think about. How, how is it that we can um, get back into those healthy habits and when the bad habits recur as they will throughout life? And that's relapse. Okay, so how can you improve your healthy behaviors? First of all, you want to increase your awareness, you want to contemplate change, you want to prepare for that change, you want to take action. Um, how, how can we do that? We can get friends and family to help us. Um, we can write it down. Writing things down is a very powerful motivator. Write down one or two things that you want to change today uh, and the time frame that you want to change those things over. Make a plan for the next three years. Where do you want to be in three years from now? Visualize the new behavior. What am I going to do just daily that's going to help me? Maybe it's reduce sugar in, uh, in my diet. Maybe it's go for a walk around the block. Maybe it's start weight training. Um, think about those behaviors and ask yourself, can I do that? Is it, or is that too much? And choose a behavior that, that you can cope with. Um, take control, be positive. You're in charge of your life, you can do it. Give yourself positive self-talk. Uh, I see this too often. People aren't positive about their own self-worth, their own self-esteem. This is probably the most important thing you can do is have positive uh, view of yourself and positive um, idea about your capacity to change. You have a huge capacity to make changes in your life. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, be uh, be filled with self-esteem and self-confidence. Those are probably the most thing, important things you can do. Last of all, reward yourself. <laughs> Give yourself a small reward when you do well. Um, in summary, these things are called smart changes. That's try to make your changes specific. Try to, cha to make your changes measurable. Um, Try to be action-oriented, things that you can actually do, um, not things that somebody else has control over. You want to make changes that you have the power to um, influence. Uh, they should be realistic, not pie in the sky. 
I want to be world champion. That is perhaps a little bit uh, too f much of a step if you're not uh, already close to being world champion. <laughs> um, and, and make them time oriented. So I'm going to do this for a month and see how it reevaluate. It's going to work. Um, unsuccessful goals are usually sort of really vague and open ended and open ended and too big and things like that. So you want to avoid those.